Welcome to The Know, I'm Meg Turney. I'm John Reisinger. If you've ever considered releasing a single platform video game on the same day as Fallout 4, eh, you might want to rethink your strategy. Don't just, do it. Just a little bit. Rise of the Tomb Raider, the Xbox exclusive follow-up to the Tomb Raider reboot by Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix, has estimated its first week sales, they're not pretty. Released the same day as the biggest video game of the year, they said. Go Xbox exclusive, they said. What could go wrong? So as much. it turns out, a shit ton. Yes. Estimates place Rise of the Tomb Raider sales at just over 300,000 copies in its first week. Yes, that number is for worldwide sales. Ow. For a little bit of perspective, Fallout 4 is estimated to have moved 5.2 million units in its first week at retail, and that doesn't include its online sales, which are estimated at over 2 million. That's more. Of course, to be fair, nobody thought Rise of the Tomb Raider was going to compete with Fallout 4 in terms of hard sales numbers, except for maybe like that one crazy guy at Square Enix who always names all the Kingdom Hearts games. It's so weird. 2.5 remix. Don't do that. No no decimals in, in game titles. No, no. But even the first Tomb Raider game did better in its first week with an estimated 1 million copies sold, setting a franchise record. And remember, those sales were so disappointing to Square Enix that they rebooted the CEO position with Yoichi Wada stepping down back in 2013. So with sales at just one third of that disappointing number, who knows how many people will get fired this time around? Everyone! It's probably gonna be a party <laughs> of firing. <laughs> So you're I, don't, I don't think that's a party. <laughs> well, I bet it's for somebody. <laughs> so you're saying that the crazy survival of the grittiest marketing sound they did for the Rise of the Tomb Raider with people strapped to a snow-blasted billboard didn't work? No. That's a thing they did. They did do that. Well, at least the money they received from Microsoft for exclusively, probably, for exclusivity, probably helped them offset those sales quite a bit, yeah? I mean, Microsoft reportedly paid up to $75 million to Rockstar for that GTA 4 DLC exclusivity on last generation, so the stakes have to be even higher this generation, right? Not exactly. Of course not. A analyst Michael Pachter uh, predicts that Microsoft paid Square Enix around $10 million for its timed exclusivity deal, which will place the PC version of Rise of the Tumor out next spring and on the PS4 next winter. There's some math to be done to figure out if that $10 million makes it worth financially, but no, it doesn't seem to at all. Yeah, that's, that's rough. <laughs> Fans have already been taking Crystal Dynamics and Square Enix to task on the Tomb Raider forums, saying that history is repeating itself in terms of the company having to de defend itself against poor sales. It got so heated that Crystal Dynamics' Brian Horton had to post a response which said, Microsoft and Square are very happy with Rise and the dev team. Thanks for the concerns. Crystal and Eidos Montreal made a game we are proud of, and we appreciate the overwhelming number of positive reviews and fan feedback. We're looking forward to the Game Awards next week, where we are nominated for Best Action Adventure and Best Performance for Camilla. Translation, we made a good game and sales are somebody else's job. Yes. <laughs> he even goes on to say just about that much when fans kept going back and forth about how poorly the game is doing. But why is Rise of the Tomb Raider selling so poorly? For one, most people generally don't have the money to buy multiple titles at the end of the year. With Battlefront, Fallout 4, Halo 5, and Call of Duty all landing within a few weeks of each other, it only makes sense that Rise of the Tomb Raider took a backseat to those other franchises. It's really, really bad timing. There's a lot of games. <laughs> so many games. But the real killer here is probably the Xbox One exclusivity. Right now, the PS4 only owns more than half the market, uh, of the console market at least, so you're cutting out a huge number of potential players with a deal like this. You'd think that with a new influx of Xbox One sales recently, this number would have been a little bit better, but then you'd have to remember that Microsoft has essentially done away with bundleless sales of the system, meaning that you're already buying your console with a game, and you're probably going to choose a Fallout 4 or Halo 5 bundle instead. Hopefully the game sold better on Black Friday, but early reports indicate that PlayStation 4 dominated Black Friday as well, despite more Dora Buster deals heavily revolving around Microsoft's merchandise. You can't blame Microsoft for trying, though. After all, strategies like picking up Rare Studios and exclusivity deals on Call of Duty map packs were how Microsoft made up ground and beat Sony last generation, having more money to throw around and ultimately coming out on top. But this is a well they're going to keep going back to, especially now that consoles exclusives are generally only found in tombs themselves these days. <laughs> Get it? That's a Nobody joke. Nobody does them. <laughs> But could Rise of the Tomb Raider be a warning against other developers doing the same thing? Or even a deterrent for Microsoft from taking a big gamble on a future title like Rise of the Tomb Raider? The idea here is that exclusives are supposed to be win-win situations. For Microsoft, it increases sales of its system and keeps people from buying competitors. And for the developer, it offsets the costs of the bigger market. Neither of those happened here, Yeah, they didn't work. Yeah, it seems more like both guys lost in this instance, yes. at, least, at least initially. 
Uh, anyone with a PS4 that wants to play a game like Rise of Tomb Raider has the Nathan Drake collection to tie them over until Uncharted 4 comes out. Even though it's still months away, that's the real game you're competing against if you're Microsoft, and it's probably too big of a franchise to take on at this point. The previous Tomb Raider sold well, but it's no Uncharted in terms of franchise power at the moment. It really is a shame, too, because Rise of the Tomb Raider is a very fun game, and it? probably it is fun, okay. and it probably deserves more attention than it's getting. Hopefully once we move deeper into the holiday season and people have moved on from some of the other huge games that completely overshadowed it, we'll see some sales pick up. I'm never stopping playing Fallout 4. Yeah, we'd hate to see more CEOs lose their jobs. Pretty soon, <laughs> yeah, who cares? Pretty soon, Tomb Raider games are going to turn into Madden curses for Square Enix board members. That was a sports joke, sort of, because I'm good at sports jokes. Hey, oh! Nailed it. So, what do you guys think of Rise of the Tomb Raider's exclusivity deal? I'm sure you fucking hate it. Why is that even a question? Yeah. Hey, who likes that exclusivity shit? Have you played the game? Are you collecting the shit out of Geothermal Valley and hunting? Animals. To get more information on Tomb Raider, future exclusive deals from Microsoft and the Square Enix board, watch of 2015, like this video, and subscribe to The No. I think I'm screaming for my life, and yeah. nobody cares. She's smiling. Yeah, she's happy, and Gus is like mad. He's also nude for some reason. That's his, like, nude It's like pose. his thing, yeah. But we're clearly not on a nude beach. <laughs>